Hello, um, we will talk about today how you can actually return something from a widget or store something from a widget and take information actually from a widget. As you know, you can, you already can do this from a custom, uh, sorry, custom widget. So you already know uh, how you can do it from custom function. So I will give you a quick example. Uh, it's when you click over uh, here, when you have a name, for example, sum, and I have an integer, and I have a value one and value two, and then this will be integer as well. And then it let's in this case, let's say that they are not knowable. And here I will return, for example, value one plus value two. And then here, if I say two plus three equals two, it should be five, right? So it's five. And then this five, you can actually use it wherever you want to use it. Uh, and this is actually uh, the return. So this is what, what you're actually getting from the return. And the, and the action, you can also have a return. So when you click, uh, when you create a new action, and when you click the name of the action, and then this is the boilerplate you will get. And then here you have a return and you have uh, a check uh, and then you can, uh, or, or a switch, you can switch it. And then you can say, okay, I want an integer for my return type. And you can actually see that it's future integer. This is the return time that is expected. And after that, you can use the return time wherever you, uh, however you want to. It's actually when you go to uh, when you go to here, and when I go to uh, actions, and when I say, for example, when I click, uh, uh, when I update the local state or whatever, then you can actually, then you actually can use this inside an action. So you can actually use what is outputted from the action you can act actually use it in another action or or whatever. Uh, but I'm assuming you already know that and you're here to know how you can actually, because right now when you go to custom widget, you don't have a return type, but there is no way you can return something from widget because in the end of the day, widgets are uh, only for displaying things like container buttons um, and so on and so forth. Uh, so how you can actually do this? Uh, the easy answer is you cannot do it, uh, but the long answer is that you actually, uh, there are a lot of ways to actually do it, uh, but the way that I'm doing it is to uh, create a local state and then put whatever you have it, uh, in your whatever you want to uh, store or return from uh, or output from the custom widget store it in the local state and then you can use it from there after that. So in this case over here, I have a very uh, example code now, which is only have a flutter flow button. And inside this button, you only have, uh, uh, you will have uh, action as a parameter in which the name is uh, callback action. I misspelled the back. Uh, but it's a uh, callback action. It should be the name of the parameter of the action. And then why we need an action here, uh, the action, it's actually needed uh, because uh, we want to display the changes of the local state in the same page. So if I go over here and I quickly go back uh, to my first page, so this is my first page. Let me just quickly show you the structure, what I have. So this is my first page and my first page I'm using, I have the local state in this case, my local state name, uh, its name. And then uh, here I have the, my custom widget button, which have a parameter of an action and I have a normal button. And then inside here, I have the same structure, but this time this custom widget don't have an action as a parameter. And my last, page is actually displaying uh, the local state uh, value. And then when I when I go over here and when I click on the custom uh, widget with, which has a uh, which has a parameter of action, when I click here to open the actions, 
I'm actually changing the name of the local state, updating the name of the local state to value from custom widget or custom action, so to say, because it's a custom widget in uh, reality, but I didn't change it as uh, you can see over here. Uh, and the other one, uh, it's a local, uh, it's a normal button. So when I have the normal button, it's updated from normal button. When I click on the normal button, I have an action on tap, update local state, updated from normal button. So you can see this in, uh, in theory. Uh, when I uh, refresh this page, actually, uh, one more thing before we go, I have an, on both pages over here, I have on page load. So when the page is loaded, uh, I'm changing uh, the variable to uh, on page load. So let me just quickly uh, explain you how the code is working uh, because I have a default value over here. So this is the first, uh, this is the value that will be, uh, that will be given when you first start your application. This is the default value and this value will be uh, assigned to this variable. If you don't have anything here, it, uh, nothing will be assigned, so it will be an empty string. But in my case over here, it's John. But after that, when the page loads, it will actually change this John to on page load. So if I visit this page again, we should see on page load. This is exactly what we see. And then when I click this button over here, we will see updated from normal button. And when I click over here, it says updated from normal button. And when I click this, custom widget, I should be, uh, it should, it should say updated from custom action. So when I get, uh, when I go over here and I click on this button, you see value, uh, from custom action. Uh, it's actually value from custom action, right? Yeah. It's value from custom action. So important to know here is that this is actually updated in real time. So when I click this button, you can see actually the changes on the page displaying in real time. And you can do this uh, only uh, if you're actually uh, using uh, the, uh, the parameter and you're actually using an action. So how you can do this in theory, uh, uh, in reality, sorry, uh, you can actually go here and when you have on, uh, on press, so it's on press on top, uh, you have the set state equals to callback action which is the action, actually the name of the action and then call. So when you actually click on the button, in t when you actually click on the button, you're actually calling or you're saying, okay, start this action and output it. And you can have as many actions as you, as you like here. You have a 1 million action, it doesn't matter. They'll be executed from top to bottom or from the logic that you have, like conditions and so on and so forth. Uh, but because we updated this custom, uh, we updated this uh, local state from, from an action, it's actually updated in real time. But now you're saying, okay, but uh, this is not actually helping me a, a lot, a much, uh, because this, this, the information that I have, the, if I want to pass some information, this is not helping. Okay. So let me show you the second custom widget. So if I, click on the second custom widget, it's actually the same custom widget. The only difference is that when I have, when I press a button, I have set state and this set state is actually updating the local state. So it's FF app state and then that name. And this actually will be updated. So when you say equal, it will update it. It will to update. And when you say without it, it will just take it. So if you have only this part of the code, it will just take the whatever you have inside the name. But when you have equal, it will just update it. So in my case over here, I'm updated it uh, and with the text from copy demo state. But as you can see over here, I don't have the uh, action as a parameter anymore. So what is the difference? If we go to the second page, so let me show you if I click over here, I'm going to the second page, which is without action is the name of the second page. You can see it over here. And then when I click the normal button, you can see it's normal behavior. So this is from normal button. But when I click this button, nothing's happening. And someone will think, okay, if nothing's happening. What then it's not updating, right? But no, in reality, it is updating because when I click this button, I have the logic that it's executed 
it's actually the logic over here so it is actually changed and how you can how we can see this uh, we should we, we should go to a second page in order to see this but let me show before we, I show you this let me show you what I mean so in, uh, so when I click this uh, uh, this text it will it will show me my third page which is the third page over here which is only displaying the text as it is the text from the local state so if I go over here you can see it's only displaying the local state and the value its name and this is coming from over here right so it's uh, displaying right now it's displaying uh, on page load so if i if i update uh, if i ro reload everything from start so i can just show you what i mean now it says on page load if i click over here it says on page load if i go back and click on normal button this text is changed to updated from normal button when i click it as normal as expected you see updated from normal button when you click the first page uh, and the text is updated it's normal that the same text is updated on the third page and when i go to the second page as i said no update from normal button uh, same behavior here but when i click this custom widget once it's not updated right but watch wait what is happening when i click it over when i click over here and then I go to another page, it is actually displaying. So it's displaying from uh, copy demo state, which is actually coming from here, right? So in reality, it is actually updated. When you click the button, it's updated, but it's not showing in the same page. So this is actually how you can uh, transform. And uh, if you want to update the text, and then show it inside the page you can use uh, version one of the page so you can you can uh, not version but the first page if you want to change something and then display it at the same time then you can use this version but if you actually want to change something from here and then uh, and then update it you can use uh, and then store it if you want to actually sorry if you want to actually take information from the custom widget and then you can actually store it uh, to um, to the local state and then from the local state you can actually uh, you can actually use it however you want to so uh, so yeah that's 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 about it uh, thanks very much I hope that was uh, helpful and uh, one example I can give you actually I wanted to give you one example it's uh, there's another, a lot of examples, but one of the examples is the last time we were talking with Ali. Uh, for example, you can use a rich uh, text editor and you can store all the information from the rich, te the rich text editor to the local state and then you can use it and set it to Firestore or use it your own API or uh, however you like to. And uh, yeah, this is, I think this is very, <clears throat> sorry, this is very important to know. And uh, also uh, stay tuned. So we can talk about more with the rich text editor uh, and also I'm thinking to do uh, deep linking and dynamic linking. Uh, so going into depth, how uh, you can actually do this and how I actually did it for my own project. So stay tuned and uh, take care.